I've been trying to think how I can support this without putting a bunch of bushes on the uh, base. If I can keep from putting bushes on the base, that's going to cut down a whole lot of money in casting. And so I think I came up with an idea yesterday. I was sitting here looking at it, wondering what the heck can I do? And I think I got it. What I think I'm going to do is add some ground down from the uh, cliff here, or the ridge, and have it come up underneath his hoof. And I want it to look like the hoof is off the ground, but barely. And what I can do is, under the hoof, raise the ground to meet the hoof, therefore giving it a point of contact. And that would mean three points of contact on the horse uh, to the base without having to uh, add something to cover up the horse. So I don't know if it's going to work, but uh, got to try. That doesn't look too bad. The idea is not to make it look uh, too obvious. So I'm going to Bring the ground up just a little bit higher. But there's got to be a way to do that and fool the eye into thinking that that foot is off the ground. And maybe have the uh, bronze be back in the shadows so that... Uh, it disappears. Yeah, and I think what I'm going to do is raise the rock on this side because if I do that, when you're looking at it from this angle, you can't see an empty space with a pillar. You, you just see empty space. And so that kind of fools the eye into thinking all of this is uh, off the ground when it really isn't. It's a slick way of saving a lot of money in casting costs because if I did bush sagebrush coming up and meeting the horse's leg, that sagebrush has much more detail and uh, I need to uh, pay for that. All right, I gotta cut around the bottom of that other hoof or leg so I can put the hoof in there. So I'll get that cleared away. I'm gonna use my wider wire tool. Whoops, not that one. That doesn't have a. This one has a serrated edge. So I'm gonna use a wider tool, and the reason why. It covers a, wide, a wider spance uh, to even out the ground in a wider space. It's sort of like using a, a wide rake on your, your garden ground. It, it tends to smooth a, a wider area. So that's what I'm doing. Now, a lot of people ask me what happens to these when I cast my work. These supports... Uh, they make a mold around them, just like they would of the, the leg, but in the uh, wax stage, they would just cut it off at the belly and at the uh, base and just fill in that uh, space or that hole that's made by the uh, uh, thing being there. But I just realized that the distance between the fetlock or the uh, this uh, uh, joint here was too short to the top of the hoof and when I checked it against this it was uh, off and so I'm just making a small change to that right now and now the length is, is more uh, in line with the other leg you don't want to have this air between that joint and the hoof to be different than between there and that hoof uh, you want them to be both the same or else it's not going to look right all right, let's get that other hoof going. The 
So like I've shown you before, I take a piece of clay and I roll it out. And now I need to find my lighter. There it is. And my knife, wherever that might be. Where's my knife? There it is. So now I got this rolled out. And it's about the same diameter as the other hoofs. I heat up the X-Acto knife blade. That's just so that it cuts through the clay a little cleaner. And uh, wipe it off because I don't want to have a bunch of black coming off onto the clay. And then I just cut at an angle. And then at another angle. And there I've got a hoof. With a little adjusting and fine tuning. And then what I want to do is I want to have this go around the armature. So I cut a notch out of it. Take that out. Oops. There we go. And now I can just put this, slide this into place right there. Now see, I was originally going to not finish off the bottom part of that leg, so now I'm going to have to. This is one of those uh, metal tools I got from Sculptor Depot that has a round uh, top on it and a flat round on both sides of this thing too. I'm just going to blend the fetlock in all the way around. Size of the hoof with the uh, size of this hoof. Needs to cut down just a little bit and the length. Got to check the length of it. This uh, metal tool here has a a uh, round uh, ball at the end of it at an angle, which makes it really handy. Because I don't have to do it up here, I can just do it at an ang this angle and it makes it really handy for my foot hand to be... It's just really handy. If you're seeing this kind of tool for the first time, this is a glyptic tool. And it's got a little uh, set nut in here. And you can actually change, interchange your uh, wire ends uh, with, you know, you've got several different wire ends that you can uh, put into the tool. And I picked this one and this one on this end uh, for this uh, particular handle. All right, uh, that's going to do it for today. I'm going to work on the face tomorrow of the horse, um, the head of the horse, and get that uh, finished up. And when I get that finished up, uh, everything else will be just about there. And all I'll do then is start putting, like, uh, hair on the fetlocks, uh, working out the design of the tail and the mane, uh, work on the hands, put the spear back on, and the feathers back on the, the uh, shield. Um, and his feet back on, of course. Uh, but I wanted to uh, give give the uh, horse horse just a little more girth down here because these uh, prairie grass-fed uh, horses uh, tended to have grass bellies. Uh, in other words, uh, a little bit of girth on their stomachs. So uh, 
That's what I was doing just now, is adding a little girth. Girth. Nice word. And I'm happy with this. It's, it's really... It turned out a lot better than I, th I thought it was going to turn out, and uh, I think it's going to be a good, good bronze. Now, time will tell. All right, everybody have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow.